All right, so we got our first section of the railing cut, hopefully like we want it. I don't know, this is gonna be first time for us. So we've got a wrought iron square spindle. We're going with a four inch on center spacing. And these are just gonna shove in tight. I think this is gonna look pretty sharp. All right, they're all going the right way. Then we take this guy and we start the fun process of lining these all up. Need a, a mallet. We also don't want to break this board. Okay, so now that we got those on, we're gonna take this board, which is our top board, set that on there. Fasten it, and then that's a section. So I've, I've also got pocket hole screws. Got my pocket hole screws in there. Good. That glue, yeah, yeah, there you go. Cool. I mean, dude, that's gonna be rock solid. And we put the top on it, it's gonna be even better. Lock it all in. Yeah. And then that glue will set up. This is good to go. So you go ahead and keep doing that, and I'm gonna move down to the next one. Okay, so as I mark these tops, one thing I'm doing, because basically I'm just setting them right on top where they belong, and then I'm gonna scribe underneath so I have the exact angle. But some of this rough cedar is not perfect, okay? That's the whole point. It's, it's not perfect. So what I'm doing is just trying to come in and find where maybe the best location so that I don't have an actual spindle right where one of these nasty knots are. And then uh, that helps me, I think, just gauge where it should be for the best overall look. So all these spindles gotta get cut down, so that's what Greg's doing. And uh, we're actually using a metal blade on our chop saw, easiest thing. This is one of those times I wish I had a portable drill press. Okay, so these are the top pieces, and since we can, we're gonna go ahead and use the pocket hole screw jig. It'll be a nice way to fasten this without being seen by anything. I've got the, the holes drilled in my tops and bottoms, and I've also labeled this one top, and I've put an arrow so I know that all of the pieces that come out of here after I've cut them, they all face to the east, okay? So that way, just for consistency's sake. So now what I'm going to do is put some glue on the bottom of this. And then we're gonna go ahead and nail this down. Out of nails, never fails. I've got another nailer though. So now what we've got is a tight 5 8 hole drilled through these tops and bottoms, and that's what we're gonna push the actual spindle through because it is a square spindle. And I do wanna make sure that I'm obviously going as square as possible. In fact, I'm gonna go get my square, Greg, and I'm gonna make sure that when they go in, they're square. Yeah, that's a great idea. So I, that way your job is easier. Now I got my square. At least I can make sure that these are looking as straight as possible. It is much easier to do this now and get these all straightened than to do it later. All right, so while Greg is putting those on, I'll hold off doing any more until he's done, then we'll put the top on. So I'm just gonna keep moving forward here and uh, I'll get the next one ready to go.
So now we'll slide this into place. Not really sliding it. All right, so for this last section of rail here, we waited for this one because this post right here, this wall is out of plumb, which I don't know why when we built this, it was good, but by the time it was sheathed, drywalled, there might've been some movement with the drying of the wood, but that's okay. Now is the time to fix it. So we, start, we finished all the way to that wall and luckily this has to spread apart. So what I did was I cut myself a temporary board, Greg, and we're going to shove this in here out of our way. Okay. And so you're going to, you're going to see what you can do. Okay. Yep. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to mm -hmm. do it. Almost. Okay. Now that should be plumb. Okay. So now we're plumb. So now what I can do is get these guys scribed and cut perfectly to fit. And then we can put this all together and then pull this out and we're going to be done. Thankfully it's bowed in. If it was bowed out, we would have to clamp this all together somehow, get it all secured and fastened before we let it go. Okay. All right, rail set, dude. Time to do the top cap, which is gonna... set. Not really, you're still, the rail is set. You still have to do the balusters. Balusters are set. They're not, not finished. They're not finished. Okay, so this is a section of cap for the main long run here but we're just using this as a platform to kind of build it, put it together. And we're going to biscuit join. We're gonna put two biscuits in the butt joint and then we're going to pocket hole screw and glue the rest of it. And I think it's gonna stay really nice and tight. surface area. <laughs> kind of let that glue do its thing. Screwed, so it's got good pressure. That looks like a nice joint. We've let these boards set a day because we made them into one long board. They're all connected, pocket holes, all that good stuff. You just saw that. But now we need to do this joint. So what we're gonna do is flip this board over, get it marked where we gotta go. After we do some pocket hole screws, let's do some pocket hole screws here, Greg, then we'll flip it over first. Um, then we can put our biscuits in and then we'll get this joint secured and then we'll let it set up before we try to manipulate it and straighten out this board using the LAX 600G. So we obviously know where we want it to be way down there and the joint is going to be what it is here because obviously we've cut it to go right to the wall but then we'll straighten it through the middle because there's going to be a little bit of this going on. We want it to be visually straight. We'll let that set up and then we'll get it installed. Cool, I like it. All right, so we've waited uh, actually more than 24 hours now uh, and we're gonna go ahead and set this in place. We're going to get it close, glue it, and then hopefully get it fastened down. So ready, Greg? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah that'll be good enough to get all the glue in. Now let's go ahead and kind of like, you take those out
mean, it's a pretty strong joint, actually. I'm not that concerned. Not like I thought I might be. All right, that went pretty good, actually. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this laser set up. I should be able to do this here. So right there? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and start at your end and we'll just work this way because that's not gonna change. But I should probably put a nail in it just in case it does want to move. There's no way. No that. way. There's no way. There's no... I smell it. This was the one you gave me. It was out of the other gun. It very well could be. Well, I got another one right here. No, I'm just gonna steal it out of the other one. So when I go to use this, I'll be like, dude, what the heck, there's no fuel in here? Let me go get one down there just so it doesn't move. But you're a little, yeah. Is that about where you want it? Probably, I think so. Like, do you wanna go with this? Or you want I'm gonna go with laser? the laser. The laser. All right, check this out, guys. So we got the top rail in, and I just wanted to show this not just as a gloat post, but we've got the new LAX 600G set up on this corner, okay? You can see that we're right on the corner. And if we go 32 foot, actually it's over 32 foot, all the way down here, you're gonna see that laser line, that green beam right on the outside edge also down here, okay? Now the whole point of this is I wanna show you how nice it is that we're at the finishing stages of the build and we don't have to manipulate things to make them look good because we spent all the time using that 600G during the interior frame of this entire project and our laser line down here is also right on the edge. So on 32 foot by 32 foot, look at the accuracy. I think that's pretty amazing. It goes to show that not always do you even need to be the best carpenter. You just need to use good tools and use them the way that they're intended and you can do good work. So I'm really happy the way this turned out from frame to finish, money. Yeah, what do you guys think? I think the railing turned out really good. It looks really nice and clean. This was all milled telephone poles from a local uh, telephone, no, actually a high wire line that were pulled out a years ago and the client saved them, had them all milled down into this lumber. So we're gonna go ahead and sand it down, get it looking good, uh, this top rail, take a little round over bit on it, but not bad for probably 50 year old cedar that's been sitting out in the weather. All right, so now that we have this rail, we should have done this before, it would have been easier. We're putting together a trim piece that's actually gonna go out here on the front. So this is gonna step down and give it a little bit of a detail and it's gonna go right along this front to clean it up. All right guys, so this is that test fit that we did. This is only glued and biscuit jointed. And so this just kind of is to demonstrate, hopefully, how strong of a joint that not only do we have on all of our window miters because that's not only biscuit glued, it's also pocket screwed. Uh, with the Craig jig, but uh, I set this up, it's been 24. It's been over 24 hours. Oh yeah, last night would have been 24 hours, and it's this morning, so we're we're past the 24 hour mark. Probably and it was seven to two. No, 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 it was, it was today's Thursday, it was Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. It was the last oh, yeah. thing we did, so here you go. You're gonna go ahead and try to just see how strong it is. I mean, it is pretty. It's but for, for, are you even trying or no? Yeah, I'm Can I just feel it? Can yeah, you go just ahead, feel it. Like, you don't have to go oh. hard at it, but you can feel like it's okay. super strong. Let's see. What what does it take to do this? Come on. Come on, buddy. No, come on. You, come on, buddy. You, you do way more than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's just glued that with is. a biscuit. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Just grab this also. We get, we're gonna get some uh, some good Instagram content as well, okay? Okay guys, this is a test joint that we did. It's only glued and biscuit jointed. So no pocket hole screws, no nothing. Greg's already been going at this and I figured I'd give it a try too. Oh my, that's actually stronger than I thought it was gonna be. 
Ugh. That's crazy. This is how we did all of our windows. I don't think I can do this. Dude, that's pretty legit. We know, we all know you're pretty Oh, man. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Are you even trying hard, Greg? Oh, my gosh. Just clear. Oh, I'm going to pass out. That's insane. <laughs> okay, come on, dude. This is for real though, okay? No, this is for this real. This is like... only glue. Come on though, like, like for real, like pull this thing. Dude, it, Come on, it, put it our feet together. Break, I'm going through No, the you wall. gotta be, be supported, let's go. Come on, come on, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, you know what? Maybe we're not gonna be able to break it. So trust the glue. It's all about clamping pressure and let it cure set up. This is a joint that my client will be able to appreciate not opening up on all their windows through you know, the life of this home for them. Because if Greg and I can't pull it apart, I'm pretty sure Mother Nature ain't gonna do nothing. Let it be written, let it be known that that was a very strong joint. You're the chosen one? Yeah, I guess I'm the chosen one, the, 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 the master of wood. I don't know, I thought that was interesting, guys. Um, I know that we could have used a domino. That would even add even more strength. I think they say dominoes are even better than biscuits, but do you need better than that? That's pretty impressive. I think you probably weakened it for me. You keep going down all the way. Now roll it flat. So what I need to do now is we need to get to the middle and lift it up. Okay. <laughs> nice, dude. Now we just push it up tight. I'm tight. I look perfect on this side. Easy, easy money, dude. Uh, this this actually is turning out once again better than I anticipated, and uh, all while using just old. Old telephone pole lumber, dude. I never would have guessed it. Dude, this is gonna look actually pretty decent, man. I feel like I could put a nail into that, but just don't know if I want to. I feel like I could put a nail into that, Greg. I think you, no. I think I can. Not, not that way. I think so. Like this. Yep. All right, we just got it sanded down. We got a round over here on the edge. That really helped out. And I think this butt joint turned out just fine. I know a lot of people on Instagram specifically were concerned with leaving the end grain exposed. Listen, this, this material has literally been outside for 50 years, maybe even longer. It was old utility poles and uh, milled down. So this stuff isn't really going to move much. It's been sitting around here at the house now for what, Greg? Six months? Seems like it. Yeah. So what you get is, is what you see is what you get. And uh, it turned out really really nice. So I think this is ready for a nice finish. We had one little mess up right here where the sander grabbed a piece of the grain, popped it up. We glued it back down. Hopefully that'll turn out good and we can uh, sand that down maybe tomorrow. But uh, there's another joint somewhere around here. I just passed it right there. Not bad. We've got it all trimmed out. Turned out pretty good. 
You know what's really cool, Greg, is the fact that like this whole section was 100% an add-on. When, yeah. you, when you think about that. This wasn't going to be here. None of this. I mean, this whole extra bonus balcony with the added space. I mean, this is, uh, what is it? 32 by 16? Like 15 maybe? Yeah, well, I guess you can count the sheets. One, two, three, and then, well, that's a full sheet right there. So it has to be 16 foot. Yeah, 16 foot. I kind of like how this detail worked out here. So you can see the five quarter, then the three quarter that overhangs. And then there's a piece of trim that goes underneath there to clean it all up. And, um, and then on the back side, the carpet. So on the back side, the carpet will just go right up to this five quarter board. That'll be kind of nice.